Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the slightly late running, my apologies, uh, Bull versus Bear webinar um, with Trade Day. Steve Miley on the call today on TGI Friday. Thank God it's Friday the 17th of June. It's hot, hot, hot here in the UK. We've got the highest temperatures of the year through 30 degrees. God, it doesn't happen very often in the UK. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, we're going to go for our usual regular run through in here today. Not too much to add on the uh, macroeconomic fundamental side, calendar's light, um, but nevertheless, we'll take a look at what we've got coming through today. So um, first of all, uh, we're gonna have, you know, we've had some light data today. Uh, did get the BOJ last night. Um, BOJ not really adding, um, where's the, uh, I haven't got, I closed the article ahead on the BOJ. Let me just bring up the BOJ, uh, BOJ in uh, here. Yeah, I had an article just earlier on uh, but I know I've closed it bear with me guys where is it yeah uh, this is CNBC one okay I think it was this article I was reading earlier on, but yeah, so Bank of Japan, basically they kept interest rates. You know, I've been been highlighting this as obviously we had a lot of central bank action uh, this week. Um, last week, ECB, um, which has caused, um, you know, their, their pivot towards a more hawkish stance has caused an aggressive sell-off in European government bond markets and an even more aggressive set-off of the peripheral markets, particularly the Italian bond market, um, compared to the core markets, France, Germany. Uh, and that's called the ECB then to have a, an emergency meeting this week um, after the normal meeting last week to kind of deal with that. And still we're getting some sketchy details on that. No real hard details yet. Um, but nevertheless, that's kind of started to help a little bit, but not really helping too much uh, with European government bond markets in here. They have tried to rebound, but it's been fairly... Uh, it's been a fairly light rebound. If I go in here, I can show you the futures chart in here. Um, so this is you know, on trading view. So you can see in here the market sprinted lower again. Did get a rebound on that ECB. This is the ECB emergency meeting. Then it sold off in here. This is the BUN market, the BUN future. It's equivalent to like the US 10-year for, for, for Europe. The US 10 year note, and then it plunged lower yesterday. We have had a slight rebound here. So the market's trying to rebound on the back of that news. But anyway, so we've had that. We've had the ECB in play, the Bank of England obviously hiked rates again, the Fed hiked rates 75 more than we anticipated a week or so ago, but um, it, that got quickly discounted into the market. And I have been highlighting potential for the Bank of Japan to do something, you know, with everyone else doing something. Okay. Um, so the Bank of Japan, but they kept their ultra low interest rates on Friday. Um, kept borrowing costs at present or lower levels, signaling its resolve to focus on supporting the economy. So, um, however, in a nod to the hit that that hit to the hit the yen. So the yen has been crushed. We spoke about this. It's at the highest point dollar yen. That's the lowest point for the yen versus the dollar. The yen's at a, the, the yen is at its weakest point this century since 1998, um, and it has put a nod to that. So. Um, to the hit that the yen's recent sharp declines may have on the economy. So just it must closely watch the impact of strange age moves, but not doing anything about it. And the aftermath of that is, um, and so the bank will maintain its minus 0.1 target for ultra edge, and it's pledged to guide the 10 year yield around 0% by. So they, they maintain, um, just trying to keep the 10 year at 0% as well. So a commitment to ongoing QE. And if we go and take a look at then the impact in here, so we spoke about the, you know, the European government bonds in here. But if we go and take a look at what happened to dollar yen, well, completely very, very unsuccessful in here. Um, in here, dollar yen had been selling off in here previously. So it had been selling off in here over the last few sessions. And then boom, dollar yen sprinted back higher. Um, so that's dollar strength, yen weakness. We have seen broad dollar strength today anyway, having had a very weak dollar yesterday, but do the yen weakening post BOJ. So the BOJ just not in play whatsoever. Um, let's run through and take a look. So that's what we've had. Sorry, it's going back to the calendar. Um, so BOJ, um, and we've had some CPI data out of Europe in here. You can see all bang in line, all black in here, um, meaning not red or green. It's exactly in line with ant anticipations, with expectations. Going into today, Powell is speaking today. Okay, now, is he going to add anything to what we've just seen? Yeah, we um, given that we've just had 
um, the interest rate decision which is at the press conference? Probably not, but you never know. I'm not actually sure where he's speaking. Let's have a quick look. So if you go to the Feds, um, so Fed speaking in here, and you get the Fed Reserve calendar. So you get it from the horse's mouth, as it were. And we go down to today, which is 17th of June. And here we go. So, uh, so welcome, Memorial. The inaugural conference of the international roles of the US dollar. Okay, so he's making um, welcoming remarks. That's at eight forty-five in here Eastern time today. So that is um, yeah, not long, right? So we're where are we? Seven days, just over an hour. So we do have, um, and then at, uh, at nine fifteen Eastern, we get um, uh, industrial production data. Not usually a big mover of markets. Um, so yeah, nothing in here to really concern us going into today, apart from maybe um, Powell um by so five things to know you you need to know to start your day from bloomberg um president Biden so us isn't, isn't inevitable so you know paving the way for you know a more negative um aspect to the us economy from biden nothing is going to really impact markets though um the bank of japan diversion you know, we just spoke about this it maintained its ultra easy stance the yen weakened in the wake of the decision yeah so not good okay so, um, but they, they they did point to you know the instability or the the the, the price decline of the yen in here. Um, what else do we have in here? Yeah, so this is Lagarde as well on the tapes in here. Um, Christine Lagarde is a ECB president. Told Euro Finance Minister's plans to limit bond spread. So what does that mean in here? It means that so here we go limit bond spread so they're not going to allow the spreads between the core and the periphery so let's just say germany and italy to widen out too much so they're going to limit that and that'll be pretty much by buying the peripheral bonds okay um but they uh, further details um, um have not uh, been forthcoming as of yet uh euro um, has benefited up from, from this over the last 24 hours going back to five things from bloomberg stocks are slightly higher i mean here having got hit to went to new bear market lows the u.s stock indices hit new lows yesterday european indices hit new lows yesterday um, but a slight rebound in futures this morning a slight rebound in europe this morning and then again look, as we said in here fed chow it fed fed Chairman Powell is speaking today. Um, whether we get anything is probably unlikely from that, I should imagine. But nevertheless, we have to watch it, right? So stock futures bounce, uh, dollar strengthens. You know, Bank of Japan keeps put loose monetary policy. Covered that already. U.S. junk. This is important. Um, I've been seeing a few articles on this. Bloomberg have been focusing on this. Junk bond spreads, um, corporate bond spreads, junk rate of corporate bond spreads um, are um, widening out. They've gone beyond 500 basis points for the first time since November 2020 during the probably pretty much the height there of the pandemic in here. Um, and that's a real concern because it's often a signal of higher defaults by corporates. OK, so um, junk bond spreads moving out, widening out. You can see here um, aggressively pushing wider. They've been widening out anyway throughout this year. We did get a respite in here earlier in the year, but widening out further. Worst point in here since November 2020, as it said there in the article. And that is often a signal. So it surged 100 basis points. They've widened 100 basis points in here. And so that's the spread to... Uh, um, so the Bloomberg spread to so these are high yield bonds, junk bonds in here, the spread to treasuries. OK, so the spread to treasuries widening out um, um, by um, 100 basis points. So um, clearly very, 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 very negative and potentially an indication of future defaults. Um, this is it. Just these a uh, little bit backward looking Wall Street plunges as recession fear grows in here. Um, all 11 S&P sectors were lower yesterday. Gross stocks led the way lower again yesterday. Uh, market position. This is interesting. So but the Bank of America um, in here, um, I think this is their fund manager survey. Um, a market indicated by Bank of America Securities. I think it's the fund manager survey. India used to be the Merrill Lynch Fund Manager sur Survey, um, indicating um, a market trends indicator um, um, fell below zero for the first time since the pandemic. OK, so that's, again, another negative signal uh, potentially sowing uh, uh, risk of um, more negative, um, negative price action to come from the stock market. Stocks are steepest slides since 2020, a central bank does royal market. 
Um, so again, um, you know, a, a bit more of an overview article, um, but um, a, a really negative theme, the biggest sell-off we've seen since uh, the, uh, the the 2020 pandemic. Uh, but then going into today, European shares steady at the end of a brutal week. So we are getting some respite. We can see it here this morning. We've had a rebound in here between 1% and 2% uh, by the European equity indices. Um, and then if we take a look at where we are on, you know, having had a big, you know, significant down day, 2.5%. For the Dow, we were about 3% down on the NASDAQ. We're bouncing here. Not a big bounce, but Dow's up 6 tenths. S&P's nearly 1%, 1.4% on the NASDAQ going into the day. Quick nod to the um, the um, CME tool in here. No surprises here. We're still up in here at these very high levels. Another 75 basis point hike anticipated um, come uh, the July meeting, come the September meeting, uh, the, the 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 biggest favour in here between these two in here, but the biggest favour is we're going to have a total of um, that's 125 basis points hike. So we're looking for a 75 and a 50, uh, and then going into year end, we looked at this yesterday. Um, all the money on by year end, we're going to be up at 350 from 150. So that's another 200 basis points of hikes, um, another two percent higher from here going into the end of the year right let's run through a few charts to see where we are so another very negative day yesterday having rebounded on the fed we were down right near the or just making new lows uh, when we went on to the call yesterday to yesterday's webinar you can see the market went lower yesterday we did bounce from the lows right into the uh, late trading um, we are trying to bounce today for me this is still kind of dead catish type bounce you know, going into this morning, I'd probably just about play it from the long side, but I want to see more. I'm not massively convicted on this, you know, and, and if it gets, if it doesn't get above that peak there, okay, that peak there, that's the rebound peak from yesterday, uh, that high 37, 33 and a quarter. If we can't get through there in early cash market trading, um, so if in the first 30 minutes of cash market trading, if we're not above there, I think you, you need to be on the short side. Um, and then where you're looking at support, I mean, you can just apply it from the long side, maybe running into the cash market open. But then, you know, if it doesn't get above here and if it gets above here, there's probably more to the upside. But, you know, I'd be looking for this to probably uh, potentially roll up. If it stays the course where we are, you know, it's looking like we've got this little internal trend line. So often the, you don't need to draw the trend line off of the actual low. If we draw the trend off the off the low in here, it's not as useful a trend line, I would suggest. So sometimes when you get the low goes in, you get a, a more aggressive rebound, and then you get the trend developed. So in here, you can see this trend line here is not going to be that useful to us. If we redraw it in here, it's not the best trend line because it's not the correct low. We're not drawing off of like two consecutive lows. We're, we're jumping, we're missing this low. So this is obviously the low, okay, this one down here. Then if you draw off this one in here, the trend line's no good. It's too sharp. It's too aggressive because it's drawn off of this initial rebound. The initial rebound's obviously more aggressive. Then the market settles into its proper trend. So you often, it's not points one and two don't work. One and three are not technically that good from a technical analysis perspective because you're missing out point two. So the better one is then to draw it off of points two and three. Okay, so in here, this swing low, this swing low. This is the kind of then the real trend in here. So a breakdown back down through this counter trend, this like little uptrend we've got at the moment, will be a signal to go short uh, market stuttering at the moment a little bit um, you, know, you can see in here for the last you know hour or so two hours in fact 15 minute chart the market's been kind of sideways in here having had the initial rebound through the asian european sessions so yeah i mean i think if we can't clear that peak there as i say 37 33 and a quarter on the sep contract then we um then that is a worry for going into the cash market open let's take a look at the nasdaq you know again negative day yesterday um, did take out the lows, made a new low, trying to rebound again, bit dead cap bounce-ish. Again, here, you know, at the moment, we've got the, the, the trend is the little uptrend is intact. And again, I don't think this is useful to draw it off of the very low, this one through here. I'd be more inclined to be drawing it then in here, um, off of this low through here, and then up through this low in here. 
And then um, if the market does then break back down lower through here, then obviously things are a lot more negative. It's got a lot more work to do than NASDAQ to put in a more bullish signal, right? It's all the way up through here. 11, 424.75. Now, I think that's a big ask going into the third. You, know, you may get a sprint higher in the cash market open. Obviously, you get a lot more volatility um, around the cash market open. Um, but it's gonna that's a big ask to get above there. If it can't get above there in the first, I'd say, 30 minutes of the cash market open, then I think the, the risk is this rolls back lower. And again, I'd be looking to maybe position short if we do clear above here you can stay with a long position so probably a tentative long in here at the moment running into the cash market open okay let's take a look at commodities so first of all oil it did put a hammer pattern in yesterday having put in this topping pattern and we're going to look at the topping pattern shortly the market rejected a test remember we're looking at a test down to this level 111 20 we get a hammer but you can see look that hammer fading already we've got an indecisive kind of little failure candlestick for today so you do get a hammer signaling maybe a potential end to this downtrend but the market fading let's zoom in it's going to be a lot more interesting to look at the uh, intraday chart in here so there's a kind of the topping pattern you know ideally we would have cut below here right that was our 11 30 um no, was it eleven thirty-two? I thought no. One eleven twenty, excuse me. One eleven twenty. Um, so the market held there and rebounded. Okay, um, but they were already signaled the top. Really, you'd argue below anywhere. You know, it's kind of I'd say down through like these levels here, right? So you kind of got this one, two, triple top pattern goes in up here. So where are we? Really? Do 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 do. So you've got these kind of three highs up here, making up kind of like really a kind of triple top up there, right? One, two, three, and it confirms that through there, reinforces it down through there. On that spike, you kind of get a retest and then the market fails. And then you get the bigger top there and didn't qualify it with the even bigger top down through there, 111.20, rebounds. However, you can see now it's kind of gone up to this kind of breakdown line, this breakdown area. These lows here were one. 1747 and 11714. Okay, so you've gone up to them initially here yesterday, kind of fouled around that area, just managed to get above. We have popped back above that in this morning's trading and then failing again. I still feel this is like the bigger top pattern pattern going in, it's more negative in here probably want some qualification on the downside i'd probably wait now given how much this is moving i think you can afford to wait for confirmation that little low in there is 117 oh no it's not forget that 116.33 i'd probably now want to wait for a break of 116.33 and then you could easily see it back down to yesterday's lows if it takes out like the overnight high but more importantly that high there um that's up at 119.61 through 119.61 it's more bullish but my you know for me, I'd be preferable to be playing from the short side, but waiting for a break of 116.33. Gold, very much defined by this um, bigger kind of consolidation phase in here. Um, so the market very much defined by that, you know, kind of completely caught in there, really, you know, um, for, and where are we? Well, we moved to the upper end of that. So you probably think back to the lower end of that, you know, after two days up, it's looking bullish and then a dip back lower. Um, let's zoom in on the 15 minute though and see where we are right now. So we've got this decent rebound, decent recovery, took out this peak in here. You've got higher highs, higher lows, swung back lower. Now we've made a lower high. So that's a little bit of a concern. Ideally, you'd want to see it back above there. Um, so probably wouldn't venture along on this until it takes out. So I think you have to be really looking at this as a two way trade above 118.55. It certainly looks more bullish up through there. If it takes out, you've got these little dual lows from overnight. You've got da -da -da, 118.44 and a half and down here at 118.44. So down through 118.44 looks like a you know risk of a deeper recovery. And we can put the fib on on that. And that'll probably help us out if we like take both the fib from this move here. I should just draw it around the other way. As that's the way we're set up in here. So you can see in here the market's really holding at the 38.2. And that's important, right? So it's held there twice. A down through there would certainly be more negative, at least opening risk to the 61.8, 1833. So this 1844 level is going to be important. Yeah, definitely important. So you're watching for that one on a break below there. As I say, back above here, though, it looks more bullish.
through 1855 really right guys i'm going to wrap it up there i'm going to wish you all a wonderful tgif friday i'm going to say have a great weekend too uh, be careful out there it's still very volatile i'll be back with you for you with you on monday for another bull versus bear webinar